Alrighty, I'm gonna go live now. <laughs> Thanks. Hi there, intrepid QJS enthusiasts. Um, please welcome to our next session, um, the lovely Rosa, who will be taking us through her journey from a newcomer to QJS documenter. Um, I'm really happy to welcome her and over to you, Rosa. Oh, thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm really happy to be here and I'm glad for this opportunity. I want to share my experience from a QJS newcomer to a QJS documenter. I structured this talk in four parts. First, I would like to talk a little bit about me and then I will illustrate my journey in the QGIS project. Later, I would like to describe the QGIS documentation process. And finally, we will have some time for questions. About me, I was born in a beautiful country, warm and tropical one called Venezuela that is located in South America. I am a computer system engineer by training and my research interests are machine learning algorithms for image classification and spatial planning. Five years ago, I moved to the Netherlands where I am doing my PhD research. And it was this research that took me to attend a couple of QGIS events where I become a translator and later a QGIS documenter. My first Hackfest was in Madeira. I had the opportunity to ask questions to interact with such amazing people as you can see in the picture. So nice memories. Later, I also attend QGIS conference in A Coruña, and it was in A Coruña where I started to become fascinated and enthusiastic with the community. I got inspiration and I had a mentor to start writing documentation. As you can see in the picture, in these contributor meetings, or what was called before the hackfest, hackathons, and so on, there was a lot of intense work, but a lot of fun as well. QIS, time has changed, uh, you know, but the project has seen a stop. It's still a dynamic, a growing project, and tons of features are released every time. With, with each release, there are many features that require to be documented. This list is just an extract of the features that are available in the last version. These features are amazing stuff that are produced by developers, but our users need to know how to use these features and how to exploit them. And here is where documenters breach developers and users, they connect what are developed, these amazing guys, and to deliver in a, to our users so they can be able to exploit them. And this is especially relevant and necessary in each software cycle. Now, you might be wondering what to document, where to start. If the QGIS documentation source files are available in a public repository in GitHub, if you go there, uh, this documentation is basically written in restructured text that produce RST files. If you go there and you click in the issues tab, you will see a list of uh, issues. In this case, an issue is a need, is a request for documentation, which means that it's an opportunity to contribute. You can also use the labels available there. Perhaps you have a you are an early adopter and then you want to try the most recent version the most recent features and you are willing to document those features also you can have a specific interest personal curiosity or you can go for the easy issues if you filter the issues in the documentation uh, repo, repo you can be you will be able to do that in my case i was curious about mesh data and i started to to document my first contribution was the mesh, uh, the chapter of mesh data. I got a lot of support to do that because I didn't know how to write a RST file. So my first contribution was a work document. I started with a word document, and I remember that uh, Richard Dobbin, 
board there helped a lot in uh, putting the basis in the GitHub repo. And I took it from there. I got also a lot of support from Matthias, from Harry Sue, and also other reviewers that help and improve the text to get the job done, to get the documentation done. Now, you may wonder where to get information for your contribution. Once you have decided what do you want to contribute, what do you want to write, what do you want to, to do? Well, if you are an early adopter, you can try yourself. You can get a first description from the change log and then try yourself. Test the part. If, for example, it's an, an algorithm, you can try yourself, check the parameters, check the input, the output, and the use, using the guidelines, write the documentation. Also, in the issue description, the in the issue, there is a description, what is the, the, the need, what is the request. And sometimes there is a pull request associated where you can also get information. Finally, you can also ask to developers, we, uh, to the developer that is responsible for the feature. They will be happy to help in getting the documentation done. Okay, I already talked about what to start what to document, and from where you can get information. You might be wondering how to do this, how to make your uh, contribution, how, how to start writing documentation. There are two ways. The simple, and from my point of view, the simple way is using the GitHub web interface. In three simple steps, you can start writing documentation. Having a GitHub account, you just need to fork the QJS documentation, go to the file that you want to edit, add your edits, and create a pull request. There is a full guide step by step in, in the documentation, in QJS in the website, in, and the link is there. I also create a video that you can review later to, to illustrate this step. It's, it's very simple. Another way is using Git command lines, uh, Git command tools. So you can set up your local environment and you will be able to build your files locally. This is suitable when you want to add images or when you want to preview your changes. So you can test how your file looks like before creating a pull request. Again, a full, um, full instruction on how to build locally is available in the GitHub repo and it's very simple to do. Okay, you may be wondering what is next? I create a pull request. Uh, I, I sell, let's imagine that you selected an issue and you wrote the documentation. So you made a pull request. Basically what you are doing is asking, hey, include my changes in the official documentation of QGIS. So there is a review process. This review process ensures that the guidelines as the style of QGIS documentation is being followed. So your pull request or your text can receive comments, suggestions that you will address in uh, additional edits or corrections. When your text is ready, then it's approved for one of the reviewers and then it's merged. That means that your text will be officially included in the QGIS, that your text will be included in the QGIS documentation. And it will be available for more people, for everybody is available in the website. I would like to stress that QGIS is a community effort and everybody can contribute. Developers, uh, documenters bridge the gaps between developers and user, and we have an important role by delivering accurate information, how to use the features, what to expect from different algorithms, and um, how to exploit the amazing stuff in QGIS. So get yourself involved and write the docs. I would like also to say, or to add to this talk, that my journey has been amazing, and I'm very happy by contributing in the community, I gain friends and knowledge. And not only knowledge about QGIS algorithms and features, I have gained knowledge or skills related to Git commands branches. 
or RST syntax, and I'm using this skill in my current research. So my invitation is to you to become a documenter, start your journey and have fun. And if you have questions, I will be more than happy to help. Just contact me or contact the amazing QIS community or the documentation team. Thanks. That's all what I have. <laughs> happy to hear or reply any question. Thanks, Rosa. That was absolutely fantastic. It's amazing to see your journey from start to finish. I, I know a lot of people are using uh, or who are viewing the QGIS Open Day Today are newcomers, and it's a bit daunting. And it's amazing to see someone's journey from newcomer to all-knowing sensei of QGIS. So thank you so much for um, covering your journey. I just wanted to ask, Chris, are there any interesting comments or questions? All right. <laughs> Maybe I can ask some some questions. Um, Thank you, Tim. Yes. Hi, Rosa. Hi, Tim. Um, it's so lovely to see your presentation and uh, to Thanks. have you as part of the community. And uh, maybe you know somebody who's not too technical, looking at all that you've shown and thinking about learning Git and all these things, um, is being a bit, is a bit scared right now. <laughs> so maybe you could give them some. Um, feeling of uh, assurance of like maybe what's the smallest thing they could do to get started that adds some value to the to the documentation without having to learn too much well tim this is um if using the git interface there is no need to use uh common tools using the github web interface is really easy to to do the documentation and in the there are also some issues that are tagged or labeled as easy as easy task. I could suggest, for example, with the visual change log, there are many new algorithms that can be documented, and I could suggest that taken from there. And using the GitHub web interface is, is not uh, really um, difficult. Okay, so people don't need to be too scared. <laughs> no, no, not at all. No. And do you think we could maybe do like, I don't know if it will work online, but like an um, uh, uh, online documentation collaborative session maybe in a future open day, like with you and uh, Harissa. I see Harissa's in the chat. Welcome, Harissa. Um, and maybe I... uh, some Richard and some others who would kind of help people who want to get make their first documentation pull request. And would you be up for that? Sure. Uh, we planned in the last, um, um, how to say, in the hack fest that was planned for uh, uh, Sir Tohen Boss. <laughs> <laughs> we planned to do um, documentation workshop or session to to make people to help people to do that. And later we had some com some conversation. For sure, I will be happy to 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 participate to to participate in such a, um, a session. For sure, and then we can help to reduce the number of open issues. Wonderful. Um, Rosa, we just have a, a couple of questions from the live um, chat. Um, Murat wants to know who's best to contact to get in contact with contributors or start doing this. Uh, you can send an email to the developer list. Uh, you can also contact me if I can help. I will be happy to help. Uh, Mateo Geta is in charge. Uh, Hariso, and yeah, I think that there are some people, Richard also, that can, uh, Alexandre Neto, that can also give some hints, points where to start. Oh, all right. <laughs> and then uh, there's a slightly more technical question. Amanita um, asks for the GitHub web GUI. Is there an easy way to update a personal fork, or do you always need to delete and refork when there are changes to the original one? Uh, I'm not it's getting to... technical. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't, I don't know why it should be the the need to to delete the fork, but I don't know. I. I use the both interfaces. I have used get the GitHub web interfaces for some uh, specific pull requests when it's very simple. I, I prefer to use the GitHub web interface. I also have my uh, local environment because I like to compile and see all the changes. Uh, 
what I in the in the guidelines uh, is already written how you can uh, update your your local copy your local repository so is you need first to update your local repository before starting to do your contributions i don't know if this uh answered the question because i'm I not sure anita, that was, <laughs> anita was trying to ask i think if you are working just in the web interface for example just uh, in github mm. uh, page with your fork and then somebody's changed the uh, documentation like in the in the main QGIS repository how your fork gets updated, what your workflow for doing that is. If, um, without, can you do it without having a local copy on your machine as well? Uh, having your local copy in the machine, you update the the, the repository. Uh, you yeah, so she, she's trying to ask, is it possible to do it without having a local hey. copy? Okay, okay. Uh, I really don't know. I have to say I don't use it too much in the way, with the web interface. But what I know is when you start adding changes, it creates a branch in your repository, in your local mm. copy. So I think you also if you go on the QGIS documentation repository and you just click on edit, like on a page, uh -huh. if you don't have right permissions on the document, on the repository, it will automatically make a, a fork and a branch. Or a, exactly, a, yeah. exactly. That's how it works. So that. I, I want also to say there is no way that someone can break things in the in the repo. I was scared at the beginning because I was thinking maybe I introduced an error or something. No, there is no way. Um, the the documentation system is very well set up to pre to prevent these things. So yeah. Just Actually, the, the same is true for everything in QTIS, just about, <laughs> maybe not everywhere, but I mean, okay. it, people always think you have to be some kind of rocket scientist to to help in a community like this, but actually, I'm living proof. <laughs> you don't have to be a rocket scientist, <laughs> but you just need to like spend a little bit of time and, and energy to, to see how the thing you're working on works and... Uh, uh, usually you can't break somebody. Usually somebody will give you be there to hold your hand a bit <laughs> if you if you need some help. Yeah. yeah. All right. Are there any other questions coming through, Chris? Is Chris with us? He's uh, the guy going for our questions. But if not, I think there are a couple. There's um, Maria says that she wants to collaborate. <laughs> but perhaps with some of the basics um, and the those sorts of issues, such as translating documents or something like that, is that possible to you know collaborate on a very sort of basic level instead of a higher level? For sure, um, I didn't touch uh, too much uh, the translation part, but um, my journey started as a translator. So mm -hmm. I am a Spanish speaker, so I started translating documentation from English to Spanish. And this is something that uh, is easy. Um, the uh, system really in Sphinx. So if you go and follow the instruction, it's going to be very um, uh, easy to start translating. Oh, brilliant. That's that's fantastic. Thank you. There was another question as well, um, which somebody asked um, if you if you want to document a feature that's not in the documentation already, how do you know like what to write, <laughs> like to explain for the, how the feature works and so on, where to get the information? Um, uh, any, any suggestions okay. for that? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, for example, are we talking about a new section, a new chapter, or a new algorithm, for example? Let's say yeah, just a new smaller feature, like an algorithm or something like that. OK. For example, in uh, the document, uh, for example, let's say that there is a new algorithm, raster analysis. I just I just saw that there is a new algorithm called rescale. So the structure of the, the documentation is they have a chapter that is raster analysis. So you go there. And, and check um, where the, doc the the text should go because the algorithm are listed in alphabetical order. So you can start copying a description of another algorithm and adjust to the, the algorithm that you want to describe. And where to get the information, you can try yourself. 
first you you go in in the in the QGIS interface you try the algorithm what is the parameter what is the output at make a create an image is very um, uh, suitable and is very um, visual for people that are visual it's important to have an image I'm trying to include images in my recent contribution so create an image and make the pull request more information about you get the, the the you try yourself get the information from the issue that there is a description and get information from the pull request associated when when we are talking about a new feature and there's also the change log right and the and the um, change log yeah in some cases you may need to just figure it out yourself right as well that's also um, that's that's exactly just just <laughs> try and this 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 approach i i like a lot because then you get familiar okay you are writing documentation you need to spend time where are you getting where are you where are documented getting return oh, i know i know the details i know how to use it i know how to implement it how it works yeah i and think it's 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 all about self-learning and lifelong learning and i think it's amazing to just see your journey um being able to do that and that anyone can do this it's 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 very cool thank you all right, um, if we're okay with that, um, our next session will start in a little while. And I just wanted to thank you so much, Rosa, for um, giving us such an amazing talk and telling us through your journey and showing us how easy it is and that people really should start to contribute. It's, it's not the big bad world out there. It's not intense. We're not asking you to learn new coding languages. Just no. <laughs> start small and you can grow. And I think that's fantastic. So thank you so yeah. much. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. Glad to be here. Awesome. Muchas gracias. Oh, <laughs> de nada. <laughs> Alrighty, please remember to join us for the next session. And thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.